Hey everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well and welcome back to a rather bizarre case. What you're going to see in this video is the same patient but about three months apart. So this is the first uh, appointment he had with me and as you can see he's kind of got this wet sort of white debris right up against the drum and at the time Lils and I, who was looking over my shoulder, Lils and I were thinking, what the heck is this? Is it kind of fungal debris? Certainly looks like it. But actually, on closer inspection with the endoscope, you can see it has this kind of fibrous quality to it. And this is cotton wool. Now, we did ask the patient several times in a kind of polite manner, have you put, you put anything in your ear? Have you shoved any cotton wool in your ear? And the answer was always, no, 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 don't know what you're talking about. So but it is cotton wool. In fact, uh, once I took it out, I put it under the microscope to be, to be sure, and it's not organic matter per se. Um, it, is, it is cotton wool, even though cotton wool is kind of organic matter, but it's not fungus. Uh, fungus. Now, the reason that we were sort of perplexed about this is because, you know, cotton wool in the ear, patients do it frequently. Um, you know, if they're putting in drops, sometimes they'll shove cotton wool in as well to kind of keep the drops in situ or cotton bud usage if somebody's cleaning out their ear, so on and so forth. You know, we, we see it frequently enough. But we've, I've never seen someone with cotton wool sort of shoved right down onto the drum and in this recess. Uh, I've never seen someone quite so determined to get cotton wool as deep as possible. Um, and this, is, this, is, this must have taken quite a bit of effort to get down in there. And, um, and as you can see, it's kind of, not only is it kind of wedged on the drum, but it's wedged in that recess. So that we call that the anterior recess, which is like to the left and, and down. So there's like a little trench there, a little space where the cotton wool is stuck. So, and bizarrely, we were told him obviously not to do it again, but bizarrely in the second half of the video, you'll see he's come back three, three months later and he's done exactly the same thing, but in both ears. So I'm not entirely sure what his, what his thought process was, but in any case, I thought it would be a nice case because uh, it, it, in, in this first instance, I'm trying to remove it with suction. And in the second half of the video, you'll see me use a different technique. I'll use a metal hook to get it out. Now, you might be thinking at this point, well, okay, it's cotton wool. Clearly the suction is not doing a huge amount. I mean, I, am, I will eventually succeed, but it's not, it, it takes a long time in patience. Why am I doing this rather than digging in a, a metal hook or a, or a metal needle like a rosin inserter or some other kind of tool like crocodile forceps to grab onto the fibers and fish them out? And the reason is um, half of the drum is exposed. So there's no shield uh, and the, the eardrum, I know everything kind of looks a bit pink and inflamed. Um, and there's perhaps a little bit of trauma to the drum. But the point is, is that if half of the drum is exposed, and the drum is tenth of a millimetre thick, something like that, it, it's stronger than what you would think, but it's not that strong. In, in other words, if my hand slips or he kind of moves around, then I'm in trouble because, again, if, if I'm that close to the drum with a metal hook or crocodile forceps, trauma is going to happen, unless I'm lucky or, or whatever. So I thought because the cotton wool isn't covering the drum entirely, there's no shield, and I just thought, I'm better off with suction. I'm, as much as a pain in the neck as it is, I'm better off just repeatedly drowning it with olive oil and just kind of removing sections with a fine end and just kind of peeling it away. And eventually it'll come. It's just, it just takes ages. So again, I'm, I am making progress here and I am just kind of slowly hoovering it up. And you can see how it was kind of caught in that recess. And obviously once the cotton wool is out, he's feeling a lot better. The fullness is gone, the hearing loss is resolved. And yeah, there we go, clearly cotton wool. And the situation is better. So Lils and I thought, great, you know, I mean, the, the drum looks a little unhappy, shall we say, but he was fine, you know, he, he, he was absolutely fine. This is three months later, opposite ear. And as we can see, we sort of looked at this in disbelief because He's not just put cotton wool in the ear again. He has done exactly the same thing. He's shoved it as deep as it can go uh, and no further. So I thought, uh, sod the suction, because now what you can see is the whole drum is covered. The whole drum is, 
you know, occluded and, and therefore to an extent kind of shielded from trauma. Um, so I'm just going to go in here and, and try and suck a little bit off to see if I get lucky. The slight complication to this case was, um, remember I said earlier how I was a bit nervous if the drum was partially exposed because if the patient moves then you know the whole ear will move and my instrument inside the ear will move and so on and so forth. Um, he has this kind of I'm not exactly sure what, what the problem is, but he has leg problems and such. So he kept on kind of moving his, his leg around, which made his whole head move. So it was quite a, um, if you see any kind of jerky movements on the endoscope, that's what it is. Um, so cotton wool again, less doused and saturated in drops. And I'm just seeing if I can peel stuff away. So I thought at this point, I thought maybe I can, you know, maybe it'll just be an easy-ish job and I can suck it out. Obviously, not the case. The cotton wool is actually kind of dry, so it's not going to respond to the suction very well at all. So what I'm going to use is uh, a hook, and it's, uh, but it's a, it's a nice blunt hook, so it's not a cawthorn hook, as you may have seen in other videos. Um, saturated with something, oil, I think I put in, just to see if the suction will... Um, We'll give it. A, we'll we'll make some progress here. So yeah, there are there are lots of different types of of instruments that uh, are used by audiologists and ENT surgeons. And typically, if it's like a right angled hook and it's really small and metal, usually we'll call it a cawthorn hook. And the kind of size of the hook depends whether it's a number six, a number five, a number seven, blah blah blah. Um, and but what I'm going to use here is a a blunt one, which was made for me by Chef Med. So thank you very much, Chef Med. Um, and the reason that I wanted it blunt is because, again, if there's any chance that this kind of guy suddenly has a massive leg movement, which kind of lifts him off the chair, then um, the hook won't kind of dig in and, and cause trauma and bleeding and that kind of thing. So we're making some progress here with the suction. Uh, I mean, at, at this point, I was trying not to use the hook and I thought um, it'll be fine you know we'll just douse we'll just do the same thing as last time and drown it in oil repeatedly and maybe that will work maybe I won't have to go down there with the hook but uh, no it's not it's not going to work this is just what is this oh this is a <laughs> this was an attempt to do something creative here this is glycerol so uh, which I thought might help in the sense that glycerol is like kind of a bit thicker, like more viscous than the olive oil. So I thought, oh, maybe that'll just kind of saturate the wall and, and allow me to pull it out as if it was more the consistency of wax, that kind of thing. But uh, no, it's not happening, not happening. And believe it or not, these drops, um, they, they, they're glycerol, but actually they're, they're like numbing drops. So they have glycerol and something called lidocaine in it, which is a kind of like a local numbing kind of anesthetic agent, which we don't use frequently at all to be quite honest to be to be quite frank well we do get a lot of comments about oh you know are you doing this procedure under local anesthetic are you numbing the patient up are you applying you know are you injecting an anesthetic or using kind of a numbing agent like lidocaine or cocaine something like that and the answer is almost never pretty much 99.9% .9 of the time there is no numbing agent and the reason is there we go so hook immediately was able to latch onto it. I want to say that the suction did do some work in the sense that it kind of teased a little bit of the, the cotton wool away so that I could hook it out. But there we go, there's a cotton wool. Eardrum, again, same as last time, looking rather unhappy, but I don't think it's infected. I think it's just, you know, trauma. Um, so the other ear, this, the left ear, this is the one that you saw at the very start of the video. Same thing again. Um, Unbelievable. So this time I'm not even going to bother with the suction. I'm now confident that I can just hook it out and, and get it done quickly. But yeah, we hardly ever numb patients up for it. And the reason is that in this particular sphere of work, pain is probably a good thing because it, it kind of notifies me if I'm being heavy handed. So really the objective here is whenever we do these procedures, whether we're removing a foreign body or wax or, you know, whatever, if it, even if it's a bizarre case. Typically, we want to go in 
and really not traumatize any tissues at all. I mean, if, if you watch these earwax removal videos, whether it's myself, Neil, Reese, um, Adam, uh, who's got a fantastic channel, by the way, check out Alto Hearing, his name's Adam Bostock. Um, he's got a really good uh, up and coming uh, suction channel. So whenever you uh, do these procedures, you'll notice that the audiologist or ENT, whoever's doing it, very rarely touches living tissue. And that's kind of a general rule of thumb. We don't really deal with living tissue. We just want to suck out the dead stuff, which earwax is, dead skin, cotton wool, whatever. And as long as you don't touch living tissue or rarely touch it, you're not going to get any bleeding, pain, discomfort, etc. So, if, but if the patient's numbed up, you have no idea. You know, you could be applying too much pressure and the patient's just happily just doesn't even know it's happening. So um, we kind of use pain as a sort of barometer of how well we're doing and it's actually quite helpful. So just teasing out these fibers here. Again, it's it still, you know, looking back at the video, it still perplexes me as to, as to why he's, he's shoved it so deep. I mean, he must have basically shoved it and kept on shoving it until terminating at the eardrum. So there we go. Lovely looking eardrum. That little piece down the bottom, I did try and retrieve, but the patient did not like that. That was that was a little bit too sore for him. So um, he'll come back in a couple of weeks for me to fish it out. There is the custom Chef Med hook, which I've used in a couple of videos. Um, so you can see how tiny it is. Really, really useful tool. Really awesome tool. So there we go. I hope you found that useful and entertaining. Uh, I've got a number of very, very weird and interesting cases coming up uh, over the next month. So stay tuned for that. And of course, I will see you guys on the next video.